new chord to iCloud. And make sure everybody's muted. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So let's get started. We're going to start on our back and we're going to do our breathing. Okay. So find your alignment. You have your head in line with your sternum, chest bone in line with the pubic bone. You can get up and check. Then support your head with something, whatever you need to support the head with. If you need to be up a little bit so the ribs are more stable in case your neck or upper shoulders are tight. Arms next to you, pulling shoulders and scapula is down, reaching the hands towards your feet gently. Open up the chest, the collarbone, and if you need to bend your elbows a little to the side, you can. Again, also, if your neck and shoulders are over tight, you can always just bend the arms on top of you, here or just here, okay? If that helps the shoulders and the neck. And let's breathe. So we're gonna start just breathing naturally. Breathing to the belly, releasing. Breathing to the belly. Releasing. All right, so let's start breathing a little bit deeper into the back and side of the ribs. Then pull the pubic bone towards the belly button. Lift hug the ribs, breathing in. Breathing out, activate the pelvic floor, maybe pubic bone to tailbone, sit bones together, lift. Now sink the pubic bone, lift it up to the belly button, lift it up to the ribs and hug the hip bones and the ribs together. All of these are very gentle movements. So we're working at about 20% to 30% capacity or power. So go deep and light. Keep opening up the chest and rotating the outer shoulder, maybe a little closer to the ground without popping the ribs. Keep your arms relaxed if you need to. Just keep getting that deepening into the abdominal, abdominals. If you need to bring your two fingers inside your hip bones and down, Try to sink the area away from your hip bones, not push the hip bone, the abdominals up to the fingers, then lift everything and then hug the hips. Like you're trying to bring your fingertips together and your ribs together. But focus on the lower part of the abdominals. Good. So if you're comfortable with that activation, let's use the activation to do the pelvic tilt. So on your breath out, you're going to scoop the abdominals, tilt the pelvis. So imagine you have a little um, pebble or a uh, oh, I forgot, glue, I forgot what it is in English, uh, marble, and you want to roll the marble towards your belly button, but you're not squeezing the butt to do it. You're sinking the pubic bone area, the lower abdominals, and you're lifting them, and that's going to tilt the pelvis to roll the marble to the belly button. Keep their chest and the ribs quiet. Then lengthen the tailbone and the waist, and roll that pebble back forward, maybe now towards the pubic bone more, and drop the pebble down towards your feet. Breathe out, scoop the abdominals, pebble over the pubic bone, scoop, lift so the pebble rolls the belly button. Breathe in, lengthen the pelvis, lengthen both waistline. Use your hand if you feel like you need to, one side is tighter than the other. And then drop that pebble down to the floor. Breathe out, don't use your glutes deep abdominals to imprint the low back into the mat and pebble rolls to belly button. Breathe in, lengthen, deep pebble to the floor. Give me two more. 
And I'll feel that both sides of the abdominal walls are working. Both sides of the back of the spine are reaching and arching. Find your neutral. Now we're gonna do something new. We're gonna lift the hip up and down. So we usually say that we wanna rotate. Let's do the rotation first so we know the difference. So lengthen, and I want you to lift this hip bone straight up to the ceiling and drop the other one, so not up to the rib. So we're lengthening the waist, using the glute to lift this hip as we pull the other one down to the ground. And then you're gonna switch, lengthening both waistlines. Squeeze the glute to lift the other hip bone as you pull the, this one closer to the camera down. And keep lengthening the waist as you lift one, pull the other. So you're pushing and pulling. And then switch at the midline, realign, push and pull. Push, pull. And you're really, uh, lines in your axis. So you're just rotating around the midline of the body. Keep your knees reaching forward to help you. As you lift, keep that thigh reaching forward and that's gonna help you to maintain your alignment a little bit better. Okay, even it out, bring it back. Now we do the opposite. Now we're gonna take the waist drag it up to the rib as the other one drags away. So you're not rotating, you're just lifting this, reaching the other. Then bring it back to center. From your abdominals, lift one hip up and then through the back, reach the other one away. And keep switching, sink the abdominals. Lift one side, hip up to rib and drag the other hip away from the rib, okay? So we're doing this to the pelvis. Up to the waist, away from the waist, away from the waist on the other side, up to the waist. Try to use the abdominals to lift and the back of the body to push. Sink in the center, lift through abdominals, use the back of the body to reach. Breathe into center, breathe out, pull, switch. Do last two, even out. Try to do this in neutral. Make sure that you're not overarching or over tucking. Come to center, okay? And just do two circles to one direction, tailbone anchor. You're gonna imprint, roll to the right, hip bone, arch forward, roll to the left and back in. So now remember to think of that marble on the outside of your body. and then reverse it. So marble goes from belly button to hip, from hip to pubic bone, pubic bone to opposite hip, back in. Keep your tailbone being your center point and try to roll as much as you can to the outer edges of the pelvis and the low back area. And then come back to center. We should have a pretty released pelvis here. Okay, let's breathe in and out. We're gonna go into marches and core activation. So breathe into the back of the ribs, breathe out, pull the pelvic floor, sink, hug the core in. So pull the abdominals in and lift, lower abdominals. Keep that stability, stabilize the side away from the camera and float one leg up and back, only as far back that it's just hinging from the hip joint and your low back is even more off, your back, off the mat. So keep rolling the pebble forward as the leg goes back and then breathe out, sink, lift the abdominals as that leg returns down. Other side, now anchor this side, the foot, the back of the pelvis, the back of the ribs, leg floats up. Now the pebble keeps rolling forward towards the other foot as this leg goes back only as far as I don't do anything wrong. <laughs> Breathe out, scoop, lift the abdominals as the leg goes down. Give me six more. Breathe in to lift. Breathe out. Stabilize one side as you lift the other. Keep that pebble rolling forward. Breathe out, scoop, lift the pebble back up as you lower the leg. Just 
scooping with those abdominals. Keep the pelvis stable, keep the back arched, keep the ribs on the mat. If you're supporting your back with a sponge, then keep your back pushing into your support. Last one. Good, and relax. Bend your elbows, bring it to the ground, and we're gonna do op opposing arm reaches. So you're gonna float that leg back up, elbow reaching forward. This arm is gonna go inside the inner thigh. I'm gonna reach my arm as far in towards my foot as I can without raising my shoulder off the mat. So I'm gonna show it to you on this side. So my scapula keeps anchored, I march, I reach the underarm of my body. So I want my pinky to reach to my foot. I'm gonna push my knee away and I'm gonna resist. I'm still in neutral. And I'm gonna march this leg down, this elbow comes back down. I march this one up and I reach. I anchor my scapula, I reach my arm, I push my leg away, I resist, and then I come back down, okay? All of this in our lovely neutral today. So breathe in to flow, breathe out, push, resist, and bring it down, in, out. Keep going, four more. So the side that stays down, you're pushing all of this into the mat, yeah? Foot down, pelvis down, ribs down, reach, scapula down, reach with the pinky. Push, resist, down, release, good. Let's keep the legs down and let's go into our crunches, even out your, your body there. So keep that neutral, tuck your chin, lengthen the back of the neck, breathe out, scoop the belly first, Press into the back of the ribs, come up, and make sure that your neck is reaching back and up and you're not shifting the neck or the head to push you up. And then roll down control, arm goes back up, maybe a little bit further back. Breathe out, scoop, roll the head, press into the back of the ribs, come up. And roll down. Now keep that chin tucked in. Tuck the chin, lengthen the back of the neck. So a little bit of tension of the chin in. As you come up, you keep lengthening the back to the back of the room, the neck. Now up here, make sure you've lifted both sides of the abdominals. If you feel that one side is underworking, then you scoop and lift that side even more. Three more. So uh, that was two more. This is the last one. We're going to add the marches. Okay. So take a breather and we're going to add the marches to this for six marches with crunches. So you're going to breathe out crunch. So I'm trying to keep my pelvis still in neutral. So I'm rolling the pebble forward as my ribs press and I roll up. The leg that stays down is pushing into the floor, pelvis pushing into the floor gently to keep me stable. Good. All right, so now we're gonna add opposition arms. You can keep the arms here, you can bring the elbows down. You're gonna crunch, march, and you're gonna reach. Rotate that hand into the leg, reach and push as this arm reaches down. And then you come back down. You may also do it with the elbows down. You can crunch, reach this way. Press into the opposite the elbow to help you rotate. Or the arm stays down and you reach everything back up, okay? Let's do four more. Good. I need you to rotate. So look at the hand on the ground or look just outside your knee. So push that scapula into the mat, the opposite one, rotate, stabilize the side that stays down. Then down. Okay, stabilize the side, the, the leg, the pelvis of the opposite side, push it. This scapula presses, reach, push the leg away, resist. 
Good. Okay, this is the last one. This is my bad side. I really have to work with the feel it. Yeah, stay there half an hour so I can activate. Good. So about six of those and down we go. Nice work. Excellent. Okay, so let's go through some bridges here. And then we're gonna come up and do some arm work with the band. So keep your, your feet in alignment with your sit bones in parallel. If we're having any knee pain today, any outer thigh pain, put a ball, a pillow or a block between your knees, not too narrow. It still should be about hip width apart, okay? Then let's roll up halfway to activate the pelvis. Reach the arms down. Lengthen the head and the neck up. Press into the heels until you feel the, the butt activate. Breathe out, scoop the abdominals, roll the pebble, pebble to the belly button, and roll that pelvis off the ground. Stay there. Chest and ribs are pressing. Abdominals and tailbone are lifting. Knees are reaching forward. And you're feeling a nice lengthening through your spine. Forward and up. On your next breath out, use your abdominal muscles to return one bone at a time back down into the mat. Let's do two more of those. Breathe out, scoop, press into the heels, squeeze the butt. Reach those knees, tailbone forward, ribs, scapulas, press down. Breathe out, use the abdominals, roll back down. Neutral, last one. Scoop, imprint, pebble to belly button. Press the heel, squeeze the butt. Roll the pelvis, tailbone and knees reaching, ribs down, chest open, scapulas pressing down with the ribs. Scoop the abdominals, down we go. All right, so let's go up and do full bridges. Let's try to do five bridges. We're gonna breathe out, scoop, imprint, press the heel, squeeze the butt. Roll up. Now try to roll up one bone at a time. Keep the chest still pressing, the scapula still pressing, the thighs and the knees reaching more, and the back of the thigh and the glutes lifting that pelvis up. Look up. Are you even? If not, one side is dropping. Squeeze that butt. Bring it up. Reach everything, chest, ribs, thighs, scapula, arms down. Roll down from the highest point, your esophagus here. Relax the chest and from the esophagus, press. Keep your thighs still reaching, your tailbone still reaching. One bone at a time goes down and you go back to neutral. You don't have to go this slow, okay? So your next four, you can go a little bit more fluid up and down, but make sure you're doing everything right. I'm, I'm gonna keep cueing you. Breathe out, scoop. Press into the heel, squeeze the glutes. Pebble to belly button all the time. Roll one bone at a time. Keep the scapulas pressing, the arms reaching, the back of the neck and head pushing. Just the butt pushing up, the abdominals pressing down gently, thighs reaching forward. Your big toe is anchored, okay? Don't roll into your pinky. And then take a deep breath in at the top and then from your esophagus, push down. Good, keep going. Breathe in to lengthen. Breathe out, scoop, press the heels, roll the pelvis, lengthen the body all the time. Always check. Maybe my pelvis is not leveled. Looks leveled for me here. Reach long. Breathe out, roll down. Okay, if you're feeling more mobility, you can go a little faster, two more. Scoop, press. Roll, lengthen, go a little higher each time. Push the butt up a little higher. Press the scapulas down. Reach the tailbone and the knees forward, the thighs. Very nice work, good. Last one. Reach. Nice. Straighten the legs a bit if you need to release them or bring the knees to the chest or cross number four, whatever you need to do. 
All right, we're gonna try to bring the, the heels a little closer. We're gonna bridge up and I want us to do just heel lifts here, okay? Be careful you don't roll to the pinky side. Make sure you're pressing on the big toe and the heels are going straight up. Doesn't have to be very high, okay? Neither does your pelvis. It's up to you how high you wanna go. We're gonna do 10. So you choose the pelvic level that's more appropriate for you. Of course, the higher you are, the more work you're gonna be doing. So let's roll into an appropriate level for you. You're gonna breathe in, lengthen the tailbone, breathe out, scoop. Roll up to wherever you want, press scapulas down, push pelvis up. Hold your position and let's go heels up and down. Keep pushing the glutes up, two. Chest and ribs down, lengthen the tailbone and the knees, three. Keep lengthening through the back of the body and the thighs, five. Six, to the big toe, okay? Not to the pinky toe. Seven, but all toes are pressing on the mat. Round that pelvis if you need to. Eight, control it down. Nine, control down. 10, keep the heels up, roll down. Nice, and either hug your knees or stretch those legs out. Breathe in, open up those hips a little bit. We have one more here. Good. So now we're gonna go wider heels, okay? For some of you, it might be a little painful on the hip. If it is, then you bring it in a little bit more. We're gonna drag those legs back up. One at a time is fine, so it doesn't bother your back. And from this parallel position, I want you to rotate your heels out, so toes face in and then rotate toes out. And that's how wide we're gonna go. So we shuffle from heel to toe again, all right? I don't want your toes extra rotated. I need you to press into your inner heels until you feel a little bit of your inner glutes working. And once that inner heel is pushing to the ground, you can open the knees up, but it's not gonna go very far, right? So we're wider than hips a little bit. Let's roll up and down. So press into the heels, scoop the abdominals, roll, Pebble to belly button, roll up. Keep that inner heel pushing into the ground, but keep your outer hips opening the knees to the side, okay? Big toes pushing down, breathe out, roll down. Inner heels pressing, so is outer heel. And then your hips are opening the knees out. Let me show you what the position is here. Sorry for that position, but inner heels pressing. And then I'm opening my knees only as far as I can. My big toes are on the mat and I'm rolling up and down this way. So you can tell it's not a very wide position, yeah? Keep going. So I need six of these. You've probably done around three by now. Let's do three more. If you can do more, please be my guest, do it. So I can feel that my left hip is very underworked and my right hip is overworked. So I'm gonna try to work my left hip a little bit more than my right. I'm all messed up in this position. <sighs> Keep opening my right leg, both legs. I look up, I'm even, but I need more work on this hip. That's my weak one. So I'm gonna make sure I'm squeezing that a little bit more than the other one. And then I feel that I'm more even. Okay, I don't wanna overwork my right side that's already too tight. Take your time, find your unevennesses. Roll down, roll up, keep pressing. I'm gonna let go a little bit of my inner heel on my weak side and try to rotate that leg out more and maybe press into my inner heel on the, on the tight side. So you can self-correct if you know what's going on in the body, right? Right, is that about six? <sighs> I'm all twisted. Yay, so when you're done with your six-ish, take your time, cross the leg and let's go into a number four stretch. Bring your hands through, pull the leg to chest. Whew. We're done with the legs. We're gonna go to the upper body next. 
Stay here until we finish stretching. So push your knee away, pull the legs towards you, or keep the leg down and push the knee away. All depends where and how much you're tight. Keep the pelvis in neutral as you stretch. Five more seconds and we go to the other side. It's fine if you're already switched. Okay, so if you wanna switch to the other side, cross. So elbow pushes the opposite knee. I can hold it under this one. My pelvis is neutral and I pull. Breathe. Every breath out, try to release the tension and deepen the stretch. Doesn't have to be a huge range of motion. Breathe in into the area that's tight. Breathe out, gently pull. So here the breath is to release. Let's do about three more breaths. So finish your last breath and release. Good job. All right, roll to the side, push yourself up. And let's grab that band. Okay, so we're going to be doing some scapular glides, some rowing, and then we'll see. Okay, and then we're gonna turn around and do some pushing. So we're gonna be doing some pulling and some pushing. All right, so hopefully you have your longer band. Sorry. Okay, so hopefully you have a longer band that we can work with. Um, for those of you who need to sit a little bit higher, please feel free to have two blocks under you, your rolled up mat. You can even sit on a box Okay, on a chair, it's gonna be a little bit, a bit of a different angle because I want the band to coming about this level, okay, this angle. But feel free to sit on something higher. We're gonna gently bend that knee and we're gonna pull round the straps around the ball of the feet. For those of you who have a really big long band, like a two meter band, you can wrap the band around the toes, right? Around the ball of the foot and then work from there, it's more stable. Then you can keep your knees bent. I need your back to be the straightest back you can give me, right? It needs to be stacked, the head, the ribs, and the pelvis. None of this stuff. So if bending the knee has not put you there, then it definitely needs something under your pelvis. From here, roll the shoulders back. Let's hold, I'm gonna hold the band all the way at my foot. So when I straighten my body, I already have resistance. For those of you who are more advanced and you've done this with me with the leg straight without changing the position of the back, you may straighten the leg, but your back has to be almost arched so, it does, so it's not round. It's very hard on most people, okay? So I'm not gonna even push on that. Roll the shoulders down, okay? From here with the elbows locked, palms are facing each other almost. You don't have to push it that way. We're gonna glide the scapulas back. So shoulder down, I'm trying to bring together the tips of my scapulas and the whole middle inside of it. And then I'm gonna allow the straps to pull me forward, but I'm gonna control. Make sure you don't bend the elbow. That's the most important thing, okay? So sitting up tall, shoulders pull down and back. Squeeze, you're opening the chest. Abs are working really hard so you're not arching and collapsing the ribs, right? You're pulling the ribs in and up. So we're doing 10 of these, shoulders down, 10 to 12. You're gonna glide the scapulas and think of holding an orange or an apple down here in the middle of your back with the tips of your scapula. So the scapulas are gonna glide down in a V, right? I don't know if you guys will be able to see me. But it goes down and back. I want to hold a, a lemon down here with the tips of my scapula. Then I'm going to drag the scapulas down and forward under my armpits. 
down and back, abs deep, hug and lift, down and up. Keep your body completely still and just glide, okay? Pull that band back with you, down and forward, good. I can feel my chest already releasing, yeah? It's a nice stretch on that chest. Let's do two more, I'm not counting, I'm sorry. You should be able to move that scapula much better now. Just keep those shoulders nice and wide. Nice wide shoulders. Good. So when you're down with your numbers, just relax over the legs. If your knees are bent, even easier. Just relax the head, relax the body. You can hold on to your feet. And then breathe into your back. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go into our rows. We're gonna use that scapula glide to do the full rowing. So now I'm holding higher on my band and then it's up to you how much resistance you want, okay? We start with the scapula glide. So we still pull the shoulders and the scapulas down and back. Now, once I can't pull anymore, I soften my elbow and I keep pulling my scapulas back. Okay, my elbows are relaxed on my side. I'm not glued yet to my torso. I'm reaching shoulders and elbows away and I keep the scapulas pulling back, back, back. Now I try to pull my armpits back and the tips of my scapulas back. Okay, my chest is nice and open. This is where my elbow reached. I'm lucky today. Okay, breathe into that chest and then release. So make sure the elbow doesn't go back and the shoulder goes forward. The, the front of your shoulder should be going, traveling back, yeah? Traveling back as you pull the band with you. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you to it to do another, I'm gonna do it with you. <laughs> We're gonna do eight to 10 here. You see what's appropriate and rest when you need to rest, okay? So shoulders down, again, glide the scapulas first. Once you can't hold, pull anymore, remember the tip of the scapula is holding a lemon right under right around the lower ribs here. Then you wanna squeeze that lemon more, squeeze the lemon, but the abs are bracing, brace the abdominals, brace, so hug the abs more, hug those lower abdominals more as we pull the scapulas back, lift the chest, but don't let go of those lower abdominals. The scapula should be kissing now. Chest and shoulders are as wide as they can be in front of the body. And then you release forward. Okay, and on the breath out, shoulders down, glide, really brace the hip bones down there to, con to contract, sorry, to stabilize your low back as you pull the scapulas and lift that chest. Release on the breath in, pull on that breath out. Release. It's very nice if you keep, keep, keep the contraction and the connection in the back of the body for a whole breath in. So you squeeze on the breath out, hold, breathe into the chest and lift. Really opens up all those tight muscles and then breathe out, release again, hold for a breath in, okay? Nice. Keep working, Rania. These are really good for your shoulders. You can rest anytime in between, but try to keep working. Pull, shift, and lift. And release. Shoulders away from the ears. Nice. These are very important. So we are doing tennis. Hold it back there. Open that chest. Now try to lift the chest as you hug your hip bones and your lower abdominals. Nice, on that breath in, open up, stretch that front of the body. 
And it's the scapula's pulling you back, okay? Not the elbows. We're done with 10. So you can bend the knees again, hold your feet, just press down. If you want to push your ribs back, press the toes forward, okay? To stretch. So you're holding the toes. I'm gonna push my ribs back and I'm gonna press my toes forward to pull my arms forward as I'm pushing my ribs back. My head is relaxed between my knees. And I'm breathing into my back. Breathe into the whole area of the scapula. Open it up. Wow, that's a lovely stretch. Keep the shoulders wide, not to your ears. Nice, and release. Roll the shoulders. All right, so what we're gonna do here is also holding that band. We're gonna do some roll downs, okay? So it can be just partial roll downs here, just rounding the pelvis and the band is holding your weight. And then what I want you to think of is you're gonna keep that pelvis rounded and you're gonna come up and over. When you feel your sit bones, you can stack or you can stay rounded. Now. It's the pelvis that's going to move us back. So I want you to feel that your tailbone and your pelvis are pushing your mat forward. And then it's gonna stay tilted when you come up and over through the rib cage, once we form that C shape. So let's try this. Dania, see how that works for you. The band, more resistance is gonna help you scoop and deepen more without you having to support your, arm, your body. Lower resistance, then you have to do more work holding yourself, okay? See what works for you, what your back wants. More resistance, you'll be able to open up the back more. So if that's too much for you, then less resistance, just a small tilt on the pelvis. Okay, lengthen the spine. Keep the ribs and the crown of the head to the ceiling. Scoop the belly. Now think of pushing your mat away with your tailbone. Your tailbone wants to push your mat away. Your legs are staying the same. Push. Now scoop that pubic bone in and up, push the mat away with your tailbone, shoulders stay wide. Go as far as you want. Sorry, I went all the way to my sacrum. You don't have to, whoa. Breathe out, keep the, the pelvis rounded. Scoop and lift the ribs. Scoop and lift the abdominals. Keep the pelvis rounded, keep it rounded, keep it rounded. Come up, keep that C shape. We're gonna go back down maintaining it. Good, oh, sorry about that. Breathe out and down you go. Push the mat away with the tailbone. Lift the pubic bone up, hip bones up, rounding that pelvis, coming down maybe to sacral, maybe not. We have the band so it's easier. Scoop, keep the pelvis rounded, lift and come up through that rib cage. Keep the pelvis rounded. Scoop and lift, scoop and lift. The pelvis still rounded, I'm gonna stop here. I have my C shape that I want. My abdominals are scooped up. My tailbone is forward. Lift the neck, lift the back of the head. Come back down, push that mat away with the tailbone. Push and lift the pubic bone up. Scoop and lift the pubic bone as the tailbone pushes the mat. Quick breath at the bottom. Breathe out, keep the pelvis tilted. Lift abdominals, lift rib cage, lift neck. Scoop, lift, lift. Let's do two more. Breathe out, stay round. Scoop and lift the pubic bone, push the mat away with the tailbone. Scoop, lift. Shoulders wide. Quick breath to the rib cage, breathe out, scoop and come up. Your shape should be more solid today so you didn't, don't have to adjust as much. And then back down. So a little bit to here is fine, yeah? If that's all you wanna do. Nice, keep the chest wide. Scoop and lift, lift the neck, lift the ribs, lift the abdominals, ribs, neck. And release, wow, that was intense. Roll the shoulders. Good, roll the shoulders back. All right, okay. So now we're gonna go into the push section of this. I saw that one of your bands broke. Um, so I'm not really sure if you're gonna have enough band to push. Usually, okay, that's brilliant. Okay, so if we can, 
make sure you have the midline of your band behind your neck, okay? Then you're gonna bring the band in front of your shoulder. You're gonna cross it in the back. Mine is too short. And bring it to the front of the body. If yours is too short for this, release everything and just let the band round on the back of your ribs so you can just push from there. That's also fine. Okay, but the other one is a little bit, yeah, if it's too short, then just unwrap it and then keep it on the back of the ribs. It's gonna give us some feedback as well. Okay, so we can push forward. So what I need you to do is just roll your shoulders back a little bit and down. Now where the band is, push your ribs back into the band, right? So you're pulling the band forward. I want you to push your ribs to push your band back. And that's gonna give you a position where you're more aligned here and act, active on that back of the body. Shoulders wide, I want you to push the band forward, reach the scapulas forward, and then release everything back in. Now watch that you're not rounding the shoulders forward, yeah? We're not pushing and rounding. So shoulder stays wide and the scapula keeps coming forward through the underarm not through the top of the shoulders. And release. As you push the, arm, the arms forward, your ribs are pushing that band back. So arms go forward, ribs go back. Scapulas, arms, everything glides forward, ribs is pushing back. And then we release slowly. All right. Let's do six more, okay? So breathing out. As we press forward, ribs push back. Keep those shoulders nice and wide and then release everything controlled. Push, ribs back, shoulders wide. We're right in front of the shoulders and the chest area here, okay? So if you saw it sideways when I was pushing, I'm at shoulder, chest level here. Release, I lost count again. So let's do two more. Ribs go back, arms, scapulas forward with the shoulders as wide as you can. So we're doing 10. Some reason I feel like this is nine. So this will be last one. Ten. Good. And relax. Roll the shoulders. Okay. Move your head side to side. Up, down if you want. Ear to shoulder. Roll the sh shoulders. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing, but now we're gonna go higher. Be careful for those of you that this may bother your shoulder, but I want you to think of your scapula gliding under the armpit and now up, up towards the front of the shoulder here, okay? So we're gonna push up and come back, same thing, all right? And I would like you to think of getting your pinkies to touch or to reach towards each other. You don't have to touch them, but I want your pinkies, yeah, to be reaching towards each other and down. So you should feel this rotating and that shoulder being in a better position than if your thumbs are reaching towards each other and you're doing inner rotation, all right? So let's do our 10 here. If you have your legs crossed, cross the other way just to change so we're not in the same crossing each time. And then push. So pinky side, there's a slight rotation of the palm of the ceiling, the, the hand to the ceiling. Shoulders down and wide and push up. So now we're going up towards maybe your forehead. Reach, pinkies are facing, are trying to reach each other and palms are about a 45 degree toward the ceiling, not completely at an angle with the pinkies reaching. Reach the pinkies out to the 
I don't know, I guess the corner of the wall to the ceiling. Go. Reach the pinkies, reach the scapula, push the ribs back. The ribs are still pushing the band back. Three, push the ribs back, arms forward, pinky reach into the wall. Pulse, not facing each other, not completely to the ceiling at about an angle. So keep your shoulders wide. Four, push the ribs back, reach. And in. Five, ribs back, reach, pinky to wall. Rotate the palm a little bit to the ceiling. Six. Seven, keep the back of the neck reaching back and up. Eight. Nine. Keep the ribs pushing that band back. Your head is up, not down. Head up. 10. You should be looking forward or up. Nice. Relax. Release the band. Roll the shoulders. Never do arm exercises forward and you're looking down. You need to be looking up. Otherwise, it's really going to mess up the shoulder and the neck. So the back of the neck. Back of the head like you're on a wall and you look straight ahead. Be careful with that neck position. Okay. So let's try to do the down angle as best as we can. It's a little hard because the band is a, it's not wrapped around us. So if you have the, the, this, um, oops, the band wrapped around this way, it might be a little easier for you to reach down, okay? Because then you're more supported, but mine is short, but no, my long bands. All right, so to help us a little bit, let's cross the band in front of the body, okay? And keep the band as high as you can up here, right under the armpit, okay? Then we're going to now push down at an angle, but I still, let's try to do palms of the hand to the ceiling. Okay, ribs pushing into the band behind us, palms of the hand to the ceiling, reaching this way and bend the elbows back in. I need a little bit more resistance on this one. Okay, so we're here. So you are opening the band a little bit and let's go. Push, reach with the pinky, reach with your pinky, reach, reach with the pinky. You should feel your inner arms really active all the way to the inner armpit, okay? And bend back in. Good. Two. And in, yeah, add the resistance. Three, push into the back, the back bend, push your ribs back there, reach, pinky reaching the most, and bend. Lost count, five. Those shoulders wide, opening up that band. Six, reach through the pinky, push the ribs into the band. Seven. Eight, push the ribs, reach the pinky, reach, reach, reach down here. Good. So under chest level. Nine, push the ribs back, reach the pinky forward, reach it. The whole inner arm, inner arm reaching. Under the armpit, our inner arm, pinky side. Last one. Push that rib back, reach the pinky forward, reach, 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 reach. You should really be feeling it all here and release. Woo! Oh, wow. I don't know about you, but that was intense. Let's stretch the arms. Wow, okay. So shoulders down, pull that arm across. Breathe into your upper chest, upper arms, ribs.
knees. And then bring the other arm, shoulder down, pull. And breathe into your side ribs, back ribs, upper ribs. When the breath out, maybe you can pull the arm a little more. One more breath. Release the shoulders, roll. One, two, three, four, five. One more, and then reverse it and go. One, two, three, four, five. One more. Release. Now, hands on your back. If you need to come up on your knees because your hands are, will touch the floor, clasp your hands. Squeeze the scapulas to reach the arms away. Reach, reach, reach until your chest is nice and open. Please look up, not down. Breathe into your chest. And now raise, reaching the arms back, raise your arms up. Keep breathing into your chest. Keep breathing into your chest. Shift the chest forward, arms back and up. Breathe into the chest, breathe out. Short arms up and back, last two breaths. Relax. Good. And now remember how you had your hand, which is the usual hand you clasp? Switch the clasp. So now you're gonna, I had my left finger, little finger out. Now I'm gonna bring my left little finger in and my right little finger stays out. Okay, let's do the same thing. So let's do about four to six breaths, it's up to you. Reach the arm back, squeeze the scapulas, lift the chest, reach the arms. Shoulders are down, okay? So you're reaching the arm to the floor, chest up. Now lift the arm and breathe into the chest. Breathe out, reach the arms back and up again. Breathe into the chest, chest opens forward. Look up, breathe out, reach the arm back and up. Okay, or look straight, not to look up. Squeeze and lift. Whenever you get tired, just release. Nice. Let's go into a down dog. So toes together, knees apart. Push your pelvis back if you can, and then walk your hands forward. Walk, reach, reach, reach. Your head goes down. Either you touch the floor with the forehead or not, but what I want is your arms to keep walking forward. Now I need that pinky reach. I need you to open up your shoulders. So I need your outer shoulder to rotate down to the floor as your inner armpit rotates up to the ceiling. Your fingers are all pressing on the mat. So rotate outer shoulder down to the mat, inner armpit up to ceiling, and walk your fingers forward and hold and breathe. Breathe into your rib cage. Breathe out, relax. Maybe you walk your hands forward a bit more. You should feel your lats stretching and the whole outer arm. Keep the outer shoulder dropping, inner armpit lifting. Good. Walk your fingers forward. Walk, keep walking those hands forward. Breathe into the lateral ribs. Good, and then when you're done, you can bring your hands in or you can round your pelvis and roll up slowly or walk your hands to bring you all the way up one ball at a time. Stay there if you need to and roll the shoulders back again. Good. You can keep stretching if you need to. That was really nice work, everyone. Good job. You even broke your band. <laughs> so let me stop the recording.